young boy is our next patient. What's your age? He's eight, seven years. Yeah, if you are not finding any change with the first prescription, this is a common dictum. If you are not finding any change with the first prescription, try another potency before thinking of changing the remedy. It could be one potency higher up, it could be one potency lower down. So, but at least try another potency before thinking of changing the remedy. It is a common dictum we follow. That's why you will never see us changing a remedy just after the first prescription. We at least try another potency before changing the remedy. Age 7 years. Uh, very restless and stubborn that was initially. He came to us in 2016. Very restless and stubborn initially. Wanted to bite others. Bite others. Very impatient and stubborn. Initially, he was not speaking properly, just saying the name of the parents, so the speech was quite delayed. He has mucusy stool which passes involuntarily. So, no control of stool and mucusy stool which passes involuntarily. He has a fear of birds. We asked for any particular reason for that, they couldn't specify any particular reason. There was a caesarean section which was uneventful, caesarean section which was uneventful. There was no uh, any problems with the caesarean section, yeah. He's a hot boy who sweats quite a lot. He has occasional vomiting with cough and that vomiting helps in bringing out the mucus. If you just have this, I want you to have a look in Borike, please. Mephitis. Mephitis. M-E-P-H-I-T-I-S. You remember I shared with you yesterday, coccus cacti. Coccus cacti was for adults, <coughs> they vomit it up. But mephitis, especially for children, where cough ends in vomiting. M-E-P-H-I-T-I-S. Mephitis prepared from skunk, the animal. M-E-P-H-I-T-I-S, mephitis. Are you there in mephitis? M-E-P-H-I-T-I-S. Come on, are you there in mephitis? Mephitis is also a medicine for whooping cough and the cough ends in vomiting in mephitis. There is oozing from the umbilicus as well with him. There was a few days ago but not now. Did you get mephitis? Sorry, I missed that out. Cough ends in vomiting, cough is worse at night in mephitis, especially for children. Same thing if you have in adults, go for coccus cacti. Coccus cacti is cough ends in vomiting in adults because of the thick mucus in the throat. Mephitis, children cannot bring out the mucus. The only avenue of bringing out the mucus is through vomiting. Right? So, Mephitis 30C is a good choice of potency. And Munakzoika will feel better after that. But obviously, the children you can't get that modality out of them. So, And Mephitis, there is an interesting modality if you see in the introduction. They are better by bathing in ice water. Very uncommon PQRS. <coughs> Better by bathing in ice water whenever they're having the cough. It's really quite impossible to get that, but if somehow down the line, if you get that, it's for mephitis. Bathing in ice water. Coming back to the case, thick discharge from the umbilicus, which is has a bad smell. His appetite is okay, but the dad says not gaining weight. You with me? So these are the major areas. He watches cartoon with feet up and head below. That's his favorite position. Watches cartoon. I'm asking if he can show us that position. Okay. 
needs a sofa. I am asking any particular reason why he does that. Uh, he sometimes can be very destructive to pets and animals. To pets and animals. Food design, nothing specific. He mentioned sour and sweet, but I won't give a lot of importance to that. That was about the case. I'd start. Kato was your voice? Seven. Seven. Yes. I had started initially in 2016 with tuberculinum. You understand there are quite a lot of features of tuberculinum stubborn, impatient, destructive to pets. It doesn't have any fears as such. You know, tuberculinum can be fearless. So at that point of time, he had worms at that point of time. So that was also covered with tuberculinum. But frankly, tuberculinum, I had gone up to 10 M. There was a little bit of change with the stubbornness, but there was no change regarding his destructive behaviors or no change regarding his aggression. I changed. And I want you to try this medicine when you go back to your countries, abrotinum, A-B-R-O-T-A-N-U-M. Abrotinum is a younger brother to your tuberculinum. Why I say so? Abrotinum, how is it similar to tuberculinum? If you're there in Borike or Allens, I'll share that with you. A-B-R-O-T-A-N-U-M. It's the first medicine in, Borike, in Allens. It's probably the third in Borike. Third or fourth. A-B-R-O-T-A-N-U-M. Abrotinum. Are you there in abrotinum? One of the factors for abrotinum is you will find the losing flesh while living well. I shared with you earlier on we have four or five medicines for that, right? Tuberculinum can have that, abrotinum can have that as well. I shared with you earlier on we have that in silica, we have that in abrotinum, we have that in natmure. We have that in tuberculinum and we have that in iodum, S-A-N-T-I, silica, abrotinum, natmio, tuberculinum and iodum. We have losing flesh while living well, he mentioned that as well, right? Abrotinum children can be very cruel and destructive, very cruel and destructive. You are with me? Very cruel and destructive. If you see in Allen's in Abrotinum, there's an interesting line. Child is ill-natured, irritable, violent, inhuman. You won't find this word mentioned any other remedy. Inhuman. So you always tend to think of tuberculinum and menorinum when we get that kind of destructive behavior. But Abrotinum is a superb medicine. If you have been, again, you see I'm trying to share with you medicines in conjunction to which you have used medicines. You have used tuberculinum quite a lot. You have used menorinum quite a lot. But again, abrotinum is a medicine which tends to be lost in the pages of the book. But with that cruel behavior, with that inhuman behavior, <coughs> abrotinum is a fantastic medicine. You are with me? And abrotinum also I thought of because you have the oozing from umbilicus in abrotinum. If you are there in Allen or Borike, you will see it is mentioned about the oozing from umbilicus. You are with me? Is mentioned Borike? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Oozing from umbilicus. You have that in calcarea Foss, You have that in abrotinum as well. Oozing from umbilicus. So it's uh, infection sometimes happens because there's he scratches or touches that part with dirty hands. Sometimes there is an infection which causes oozing. I've seen cases as well there is pus oozing from the umbilicus as well because sometimes they have a, sometimes there is an itching and irritation. Scratch quite a lot gets infected and there is oozing. So this is no, external, yes, external. Yes, abrotinum can be used with good results. Yes, we do use it. Potency wise, you mean 6C? It's okay, yeah. The yeah. second, calcarea force. Calcarea force. You're with me for abrotinum? Very, very close related remedy with tuberculinum. Considering the losing flesh while living well, considering the 
aggression, the inhuman behavior, you can understand what I mean. You know, the word inhuman covers a wide range of spectrum. So you can think of destructive behavior, you think of aggressive behavior, it is helped with abrotenum. And also for him, why I thought of abrotenum, considering with that emotional pathology, if you have a lot of oozing from the umbilicus as well. So that made me change towards abrotenum. When did with he me. When? When, did when we changed. Yes. We had gone up to tuberculinum 10M. We changed to abrotenum 200C in August uh, 2018. So he had waited up to tuberculinum because tuberculinum was doing all right. Like he was okay, but he was not really improving. But you can see he's quite silent today and not the degree of restlessness is there. video? <laughs> The stubborn, impatient nature is better with abrotenum. We had started with abrotenum 200C in August and repeated 200C again in October and he has been much, much better since. Considering, we considered the restlessness, we considered the stubborn behavior that has been much better. No destructive impulses after that, which was one of the concerns for the parents. So no destructive behavior after that. No biting as such as well. I also thought of in this case for belladonna. Why? Whenever you think of aggressive behavior, you have to think aggressive behavior can be directed outwardly towards other people or could be directed inwards towards yourself, right? If you think of medicines like tuberculinum, if you think of medicines like lysinum, those are medicines for aggressive behavior directed outwardly. You're with me? Aggressive behavior when you see towards others, you have that in tuberculinum, you have that in lysinum. Aggression which is directed towards other people. But whenever you think of belladonna as an aggressive medicine, belladonna's aggression is always to directed inwards towards themselves. So they bite them. You see, whenever you look in, board, in repertory, you look up in any book, you will see belladonna bite, pulling their own hair, belladonna biting their own hands, belladonna tearing off their clothes. So the aggression is always directed inwards towards themselves. And that is, I feel, one of the basic differences of belladonna with any other aggressive group of medicines. That you can find belladonna throwing things or damaging things, but no other medicine causes more self-harm when they are violent and aggressive rather than belladonna. You see biting themselves, you see tearing themselves, you see pulling their own hair, tearing their own hair, that you find with belladonna. Whereas if you think of tuberculinum, if you think of lysinum, their aggression is towards others, towards other people. That's more important. I will, I will say lysine can do that to a certain extent, but it's, I will say it's more, if you think 70% is to, uh, towards others, 30% of lysine will be towards themselves with lysine. Um, there is another medicine which we use, I have shared this with you probably, is Bufo. If you recall some days earlier, maybe we had a case, Bufo can have a tendency to self-harm as well with the aggression. You recall I shared with you angry baraita cop was bufo, so they can have an aggression towards themselves as well. All right, so that was about his case. Abrotenum is a medicine which has really helped with him, and we are sticking with abrotenum. 200C has been the last prescription. ADHD, I like to share with you a few interesting clinical tips. I'm sure you get this in any part of the world, and that's a common problem. I shared with you a few days earlier or maybe last week if you recall Chenchris, C-E-N-C-H-R-I-S. Chenchris is a wonderful medicine for ADHD, C-E-N-C-H-R-I-S. It's a snake, copperhead snake, C-E-N-C-H-R-I-S, Chenchris, where you have the restlessness of arsenic and the loquaciousness of lachesis. Chenchris is a combination of arsenic and lachesis, C-E-N-C-H-R-I-S where you have the restlessness of arsenic and you have the loquaciousness of lachesis. You're with me? Restlessness of arsenic and the loquaciousness of lachesis. Chenchris, we use 6C, 30C. Sometimes, you know, the parents will call you up and tell you there is an acute attack of hyperactivity, like he's just beyond control. Can you help me something to do with that? 
Chentris works well to help him calm the acute stage of hyperactivity. 6C, 30C. Can we use snack poison in lower digestion? 6C we can use. We do use it. 30C as well. <coughs> Are you there with Chentris? C E N C H R I S, Chentris. Okay, I'll come to that. Okay. No, that is better. I'll come to the medicine for that. Um, just f let me finish ADHD. So, Chentris I shared with you. Another very useful medicine which I have used with good results is Jalapa. J-A-L-A-P-A. -A -A. Specially for restlessness and hyperactivity at night. The, the, mom, the children won't let the mom or dad sleep at night. So much hyperactive and restless at night. Have a quick look in Jalapa, please. J-A-L-A-P-A. J A L A P A Jalapa. Very restless and hyperactive, especially at night. J A L A P A Jalapa. You see in the introduction it mentions child is good all day but screams and is restless and troublesome at night. Introduction J A L A P A Jalapa. You got that? Again, 6C, 30C works well for Jalapa. Acute hyperactive attacks. At night. At night, yes. Another medicine which we use, but it's not a constitute, it's not an acute remedy, but I want I maybe we'll not get a chance to talk about it later on, is zinc phos, zincum phosphoricum. Zinc force you won't find in the main section in Borike, but just hear me out please. If you think of someone, a child, what you get with ADHD is there's a lot of physical hyperactivity, there's a lot of physical restlessness and you know for Zincum the legs are the most restless, right? So a lot of restless legs. So physically they are very, very overactive. They have restless legs. They eat a lot. Zincum group of medicines, they eat a lot. Extreme appetite. You understand what I mean? Lot of restless legs, very excessive appetite. They eat excessively. So there is a lot of physical overactivity in Zincum. You are with me? But emotionally in Zincum, there is underdevelopment. Intellectually, there is underdevelopment. In what way? There is the echo speech. I shared with you yesterday. You ask Zincum a question, he, he asks the question back. What's your name? What's your name? So you have that in Zincum, the <coughs> incomprehensive inability. So that's why when you ask Zincum a question, they will ask the question back. So there's a lot of physical overactivity, physical overdevelopment, emotional underdevelopment. Now when you put this entire picture in a bright, attractive, phosphorus constitution, you'll have zinc phos. We have had very good results with zinc force for cases of ADHD, cases of autism. I want you to try. Especially if there is a phosphorus constitution. Especially if there is a phosphorus constitution. And along with that phosphorus constitution, you are having that kind of emotional underdevelopment. But there is a lot of physical hyperactivity in terms of the legs restlessness, in terms of the excessive appetite. Zinc force is a superb medicine. We have tried 200C, we have tried 1M. Zinc Phos works really, really well. <coughs> Think of all those phosphorus constitutions you have prescribed phosphorus in cases of ADHD. Just think those phosphorus whom you expect to be very intelligent, they don't have that intellectual abilities, intellectual understanding. So the comprehension is poor, the understanding is poor, the memory is poor, they're having echo speech. And Zinc Phos really works well with that constitution. So do try Zinc Phos, 200C, 1M, even we have ordered up to 10M with good results for zinc force. Coming back to the case, so those were the three medicines for ADHD, which we use quite a lot. Um, Maki, what was the question? Sorry. For involuntary yes, for involuntary stool, like you saw with the boy, I, I mentioned to him, he passes mucus his stool involuntarily. We have had good results with aloes, aloe sock. Aloe socotrina for involuntary passage of stool. There is no control of the sphincter in aloe, so there is involuntary passage of stool in aloe sock. A-L-O-E, aloe sock. 
especially any age group, it could be children, it could be adults, old people who are not being able to control the stool, they will tell you that muc especially mucus stool is passing involuntarily in allo soccer training. A L O E allo. N. M. Choudhury mentions in his discussion of allo that to write a Metro Medica without allo is writing a novel without a hero. So, allo is a small medicine, but it has got fantastic capabilities for mucus colitis, especially if it is involuntary and coming out. So, we are boosting today. Abrotinum 200 was the last prescription. <laughs>